Hello, my name is Alec. Hello, my name is Henry. Welcome to Use the Science. We love playing with bubbles, so I thought this would be a fun and useful experiment to do with you. We found three different bubble recipes on the internet. Most of the ones on the internet are, US, are from the USA, but these are British ones and the ingredients can be found in England. So we decided to test to find out which one of them works best. So let me show you what we've got. Um, we've got some fairy liquid, it can't be the ultra version, it has to be the normal original version. Some glycerin, a cup, we've also got a funnel, a spoon for mixing, we've also got some water in a bowl, three Coca-Cola bottles and some labels and a pen. The first one is a recipe from the Science Museum in London. Here is the recipe. I've put my funnel in one of my Coca-Cola bottles and I'll be adding three cups of water, one tablespoon of fairy liquid and a tablespoon of glycerin. You need to be very careful when you're pouring your fairy liquid and glycerin in because you don't want to make any foam because it, it might ruin your um, bubble mixture. And I'll stir my bubble liquid with with a bumble stick. It's not just Alex. Remember, try not to make bubbles. There's some more to make. That that one will be for me. This bubble will be mine. Once I've finished stirring, I'll put a label on it saying that it's solution number one, and I'll leave it overnight. We're now going to move on to solution two. Solution two is from the Home Science Tools website, and this is the recipe. This, this is probably not going to be quite as efficient. Put that in. Right, now let's get a tablespoon of glycerin again. Remember Henry, try not to make too many bubbles, okay? Okay. This will be money's work! <laughs> <laughs> the third solution is from a website called Experimental. Here's the recipe. I'm now going to do a bit of stirring. I'm going to have to leave it overnight because on the internet they say that a bubble solution is better if you leave it overnight once you've made it. So let's have a look at the science. I'll briefly explain to you uh, what the main ingredients that we have, fairy liquid, water and glycerin, do in our bubble solution. Water. Water is very cheap and it's also of the perfect consistency for bubble making, so that is a very good ingredient. The only problem about water is that water molecules are very small and they hold together very tightly. This is called surface tension. You can see surface tension when a pond skater moves across a pool of water. The pond skater can only move across the water because the water molecules are held together so strongly that they can hold its weight. That means that you can travel across the water as a result. So that's why if you try to make bubbles with only water, you just get water droplets. Because water needs to have its surface tension power reduced slightly, but it still has to hold on to each other because otherwise it will just evaporate. That is why we don't use only water for our bubble mixtures. This is why we add our first secret ingredient, fairy liquid. Fairy liquid is very useful as it can reduce surface tension slightly, but make sure that the molecules still hold on together. 
Our second secret ingredient is glycerin, which is used to make the, water, the solution a bit thicker and it also helps to make sure that the bubbles can get bigger and make sure that the water doesn't evaporate quite as quickly, me meaning that the bubbles last for longer. It's important to re get ratios right here, however, because if you have too much of anything or too little of anything, the solution won't work. For example, if you had too much glycerin, the, thing, the solution would be too thick and therefore bubbles might be wouldn't form or would pop immediately. If there was too much fairy liquid, then again the solution wouldn't work because the fairy liquid needs water to make the to be able to make the bubbles. And if there was too much water, then the, the, there will, then there will be too much surface tension, and as a result, we wouldn't be able to make bubbles because it would if or it would evaporate way too quickly before we could even have any fun. We're now going to leave the solutions till tomorrow and tomorrow we're going to have a lot of fun finding out which one of those solutions is the most effective. Our solutions have now matured overnight and they're ready for testing. To be testing we've got a bub this bubble wand here which I'll be using, but the bubble wand that my brother's going to be using for him, he's going to be using it, and to find out which one's the best, we're going to be using this chart uh, on the scale of 1 out of 5. We're going to be testing to find out how easy it is to make the bubbles, how big the bubbles are, and how long they last. So I'm going to have it start with a bit of waving and find out how well it works. We're now going to make our 1 out of 5 marks. So let's test solution 2. Solution 2! It's this! My brother's a lot better at this one than he was at the other ones. So I suspect he's already got his that bubble. Did you see that bubble over there? That was really big, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> yep, you got a bubble. Two. That's oh. definitely a very big bubble. That's definitely... No, no. Wow, I need to have some more. <gasps> the bubble! These definitely are rather good bubbles. Wow. Look at that one and that one. <laughs> so let's test solution three. Oh yeah, bubbles are all out. Wow. Look at that one. That's definitely very big. Very powerful. I can't do my ones very easy. I almost split that one in half. Though I'd say that solution three is a bit better because it's a lot cheaper to make because it doesn't have as much fairy liquid in it. So if you're making homemade bubbles, I'd recommend that you use solution three. Thank you for watching and if you have another bubble recipe, please share and we'll be able to tell everyone about it. Hope to see you again soon. Bye! Bye.